What a question, Tony. Yeah, it is not easy, but it is not simple. But it's possible, I would say, it's possible. Nuclear weapons, as you can know better than me, uh, were developed just in 20th century and were developed within a system of wars, of um, tremendous uh, confrontation. And going through all this time as a thread to life and to peace all over the world, but, but since the Second World War, many people have been organized and fight against the use and even the existence of nuclear weapons and not only nuclear weapons, also nuclear energy, because it's the beginning of a tremendous threat. And um, these kind of weapons are totally linked according to my view, and not only my view, we publish as independent media, many articles of many people that relate nuclear, nuclear weapons with patriarchal society, with a neoliberalism society, with a society, a system that has placed the money as the center of its, of its development, as the myth of our era, and not life, and not the ecosystem, for instance, and not the um, parity, the equality among men and women and diversities. And so it is a system complete that should collapse. And from our point of view, what is happening today in the world, not only because of the wonderful, wonderful achievement that was um, the acceptance from United Nations of the Treaty of Prohibition of, of Nuclear Weapons, no? But not only because of that, but basically I would say during this pandemia, a huge consciousness of a global society is, is arising, yeah? is being developed. We have been publishing so, so many articles and interviews of people that is able to relate everything that is happening today as symptoms of the same phenomena. The, the end of a kind of society and civilization that cannot stand any more longer because it's terribly violent. It's based on violence. It's, it's inspired on violence. So um, in this pandemia, we have noticed everywhere in the world that the climate change and the climate uh, challenges are much more important that, than any other thing because all lives, not only human lives, all kinds of lives depends on that. But not only, also the economic way um, that society is organized, democracy, because we are lacking a lot of real democracy, we're just in a formal one. But all these are parts, as it is, of course, the nuclear, the nuclear uh, power uh, that is all time uh, threatening life. But, but this challenge is a huge, huge one. As you know, um, in Latin America, for instance, maybe because of the Tratelolco Treaty that has protected us in, in a good way, I would say we have as people in our countries less consciousness than in Europe or in the States or in Canada regarding what the nuclear weapons are. But in this pandemia, people have read a lot, inform a lot, and develop this consciousness of the need of peace. And within this need of peace, um, the nuclear disarmament is absolutely gaining, gaining consciousness also. So we should all go through um, the creation of, of a huger, a, a bigger consciousness in, in regards to this, but linking the nuclear disarmament with the disarmament of all the other powers that impede a nonviolent world to develop. 
So I would say many, many of the organizations we are linked with have to, nowadays a, a, um, an integral sense of what is violence, because violence is not just the physical violence and the aggression. It's also discrimination. It's also non-inclusion, yeah? It's racism, obviously. It's um, the patriarchal way of taking decisions, of imposing one's uh, regard, one's view. Um, it's also the false democracy that imposes a way of um, non-participation because takes decisions without consultancy. And that is, that is also violent. So violence is not only in the physical aspect, economic, racial, religious violence, but also psychological and um, a sort of laissez-faire, a, a sort of negligence that allows uh, somebody to impose um, anything to another one. And that is violent. So a non-violent culture is, being developed since since many long time ago since long centuries ago but little by little in humanity is gaining gaining momentum and i would say that in this particular moment where we are connected as humanity also with with the rest of the species that live in this planet we are feeling um, very intensively and, and the press is publishing every day uh, the, the need of a non-violent behavior, a non-violent culture, and a non-violent social organization, a real democracy that could, in fact, um, draw again the society in non-violent ways. Well, I, I would say that the achievement of, uh, that was recognized with the Nobel Prize by ICANN was, was a very big hope. And, uh, and this treaty was, was a, is a very, very big hope. Maybe the major achievement of the last years, I would say. But also uh, the social movements that raise everywhere in the world uh, from the hands of the woman asking for a different way of living but also Greta Thunberg and all the environmental movement all the environmental claim for me uh, brings a very big hope because the young generation uh, is in a new situation, is taking the challenge of being, um, if, if we do not change behavior, the last one. So they are doing things well and they are doing things seriously. And I believe that creates an enormous, enormous commitment, but also an enormous hope. Because I'm sure the human being, this so, so tiny prehistorical being that separates from the other species and creates the technique, the techniques and the fire and the agriculture and the language and the writing. And then um, coming nearer, discovers that there is also not only a conscious being in, in him or herself, but also an unconscious dimension, as Freud mentioned. And um, a lot of uh, fantasy has pushed ourselves as a species and believing in whatever, in gods or in the sun or in, or in solidarity. But we have moved forward so much that we are now dreaming on going to the stars, going to Mars, yeah? So I am sure that we will overcome this moment because of our history. Our destiny is not violent. Our destiny should be to overcome this dark moment and go forward.